Let's have a look at what you can do with your Elementor website to make it more accessible, especially with your page design layouts and ARIA labels, alt images and all of that. We're going to go into what I've done with my home page. Now, if you're not using WordPress or Elementor, you can still take account of what you're building by looking at some of the tips and strategies I have implemented here. And if you're not using WordPress at all, Wix, Squarespace or some other solution, really consider if what you're designing is hitting the standards. Please go and watch our videos on web accessibility. I do recommend though that you do install and activate a plugin to help yourself out like the one click accessibility plugin. It's free to use. It's going to give you a little icon and you can position it where you want on your page. You can even offset it a little bit. You know, if you don't want it to be bang on your header, for instance, or you want it lower down on your footer, maybe. And this is going to give you some neat features. Now let's go and activate this and then let's jump over to my home page. And when we are viewing this on a live website and you click the icon, you will now have some options over here where we can increase the size of the text. We can decrease it. We can grayscale it. We can make it be a high contrast, negative light background. So improving your website is one thing, but having an additional plugin for free. I mean, some people don't often like this by having like these extra widgets because they feel like it breaks the branding. You got to speak to yourself and to your clients to explain that maybe this is something extra they may need to do. So let's go over some good practice that you can do with your Elemental page. I'm going to go over into my header. If you're using an image as your logo, this is the ideal opportunity to add a alt image text. We're going to click on the image, click into it, and you will see my alt text is the Learn Web Squadron logo. Try to be descriptive or to explain what the image is about or what the purpose of it is. So if it was a man having a drink like a can of Pepsi Max in a park, you would write man drinking can of Pepsi Max in a park, for instance. If it was an image that was relaying some kind of information, try to explain that. Don't be overly descriptive because don't forget a screen reader will be reading it, but just try to be as sufficient as possible. Get into the good habit of applying or adding alt text descriptions for every single image in your media library, or especially those that are going to be visible on your pages. Another thing you may want to do, and a lot of people overlook this, is that clicking on the logo will take you back to the home page. You can see the link over there. But what you need to do is click the link option or the settings and down here you will have the custom attributes. Now this is what it looks like when it's not completed. Key pipe and the pipe is next door to probably your return button or above your carriage return button on your keyboard. You might need to hit shift. You'll have key pipe value. And what I've added in is aria hyphen label with the pipe and then links back to the home page or takes you back to the home page maybe as well that would probably be a better description. Wherever you have a link anywhere, it could be a button, could be a link inside of your text, it could be an icon list, anywhere where you have a link or something that's going to take you elsewhere or it actions something, make sure you give it a custom attribute. Otherwise, screen readers will not understand or explain that better to maybe someone who is visually impaired or doesn't quite understand well, if I go here, where does it exactly take me? While you're in your header template, start thinking about your landmarks. So your header, you must tag it as a header. Don't assume that just because you built it inside of a header template, it is automatically a header. You still got to tag it because that is something that will get picked up by SEO tools. But also from a web accessibility point of view, in terms of how screen readers and other technology works, it's good to kind of explain that this is the header. This is really simple to do. All you got to do is make sure you're inside of the header template. Go and click your settings cog. Go to where it has the HTML tag and then go and select header. A mistake that sometimes people make, and it's not a complete deal breaker, is people click on the actual container holding the header. They go maybe to the additional options tab. And down here, they'll go and select header. What you want to be doing is make sure you're in the header template, go to the settings cog and select your HTML tag from there. The same with the footer further down the page. When you're in the footer template, you click the settings and the cog 
and you would go in select footer. Just get into the habit of doing that. Now, when it comes to your page, and there's going to be quite a bit of repetition, so I'm going to try and speed this up as much as possible. You want to make sure you're assigning the right tags to your headings. So if you have a H1, make sure you call it a H1. If you've got a H2, make sure you call it a H2. And every time you do that with any other headings or subheadings on your page, get into the habit of building in a methodical, logical way. But when it comes to buttons, and we're going to pick this particular button over here, start learning now. This is currently a button that links over to a menu anchor with hashtag join. But even still, even though it's going to another part of the same page, like what I did earlier with the image. So when I click the link option, you're going to see the custom attribute again. If I just remove it, you got key pipe value, which is what we've got here with aria hyphen label pipe takes you to purchase our course. So when you click that, it's going to take you down. Now you could make that be more descriptive. I could have put elemental website course or courses. But I'm just saying you click that and it's going to take you down to the course. You got to make sure you do that for every button, okay? Whether it's a button that activates a pop up, whether it's a button that takes you to a menu anchor link or somewhere else in your website or even to an external website. Maybe it's a button that takes you to Facebook or Twitter. You got to make sure you pop that in. And a lot of people do overlook it because it's not completely visible there. So make sure you click the setting cog and select or add in where it's actually taking you. Here's another thing that people do overlook. This actually is a background image that you can see over here inside of a container. It's not an image placed into the container. It's a background image. And there is something that, again, doesn't get discussed a lot. If I click this, we can see it has got an alt text description over there. So we've met that requirement. However, even though we've got an alt text description for the actual image inside of our media library, the container still needs to have a custom attribute added. And you may go to your layout and go, well, where exactly do I do that? Go to your advanced tab. So this is where you've got a background image because maybe you've got a container in your hero banner or somewhere else on your page and you've got a full blown image there or something or a video playing or a slideshow or something. You go to the advanced tab for the container and it could be a full width or a box. You go to where you have attributes and over here, I've now got roll pipe image. I am saying this is an image because at the moment it's a container with the background image. So I need to assign the role of roll hyphen image and then on a new line, always on a new line, aria label page speed scores from the course. So I'm kind of slightly duplicating what the alt image text is, just slightly different. But over here, role image, new line, aria label, page speed scores from the score, from, from the course. Every image on here is going to have the alt text. And every button over here is going to have the aria label like that inside of the button. So if you click on the button, then you go to the settings and add it in. But sometimes with buttons like the custom add to cart, there is that facility not there. So I go to button and I kind of go, well, OK, where do I do my setting? Like what I just showed you with the container, go to attributes and then you will see aria hyphen label pipe uh, add the elemental course to your cart. So if it's not there, go to the attributes part of your advanced tab and go and drop it in. And remember, if it's an image, this isn't, this is just a button, so it's okay. You need to put in roll pipe IMG. Now, when you have a button that opens a pop-up or an off canvas widget, you have to do something extra on top. And again, this is something that isn't explained very well. You know, loads of people will say, hey, we've got to do this, we've got to do that, but they don't take you through it step by step. So here's a button that opens a pop-up. If we go over to the pop up and we click the link options, like what I've done with many of the other buttons, I've got aria hyphen label pipe open the free pack. You know, again, you can make it be as clear as you want. So I could say open the free pack for the fonts. Always have in mind what's going to make sense if you read it back like a screen reader. Now, you might think that's all you need to do. But you will then fail a particular rule on some algorithms like what I was showing you with some of the other tools earlier. So what you need to do after you've done this, and this is the easy bit, you go over to the advanced tab and you go down to where you have attributes and you want to write role equals in speech marks button. 
because you have to now tell it that it's a button. Because even though we know it's a button, because it's the button widget, sometimes some algorithm tools will still be like, well, we're not entirely sure what that is. So there's a little bit extra you have to do. So I'm just letting you know that if you have any buttons that open a pop-up or an off-canvas widget or something like that, because it's not actually taking you anywhere, you got to remember, this isn't taking you anywhere. It's opening, it's activating. You need to make sure you put role equals speech marks, button, close the speech mark. Also bear in mind that with certain links or buttons, you might want to go over to your style tab and you might want to add in like a hover effect. So in a lot of these, I've got a gross. So there is something to kind of let you as a user know that the button is kind of clickable or you may want to go and add in a border outline. Now, I am going to show you what this looks like when you do start navigating with the tab and the arrow keys and how everything should be clear to you. But if you want to go the extra mile, go and add in, say, a border with a different color so it stands out. One other thing I do want to highlight, even though it's not on my homepage, is if you are using a form, and again, this gets a little bit overlooked, you may have like light gray colors, maybe for some of the fields, what you really should consider is the outline of your buttons. Sometimes what people do is they'll go to their form, they'll remove the border color for their fields and instead add a light gray background. And I hope you can see that on screen. That might not be great for some people with visual impairments. So if you are going to do that, you may still need to add in a border. But, you know, you're going to have to go and test this out a little bit. The final thing I want to talk about is navigating your website with a keyboard. If you're not using a mouse, I have already shown you that you do have this accessibility tool over here, but I'm just going to click into the actual uh, URL uh, address and I'm going to click tab and I get a button called skip to content. If I go and hit return, that actually skips whatever's in your header. So maybe you've got a very big header. Maybe it's got loads of stuff going on in there. Social sharing icons, mega menu. There may be a lot going on and you want the user just to go straight to the content of the website. So when you click that skip to content, it will skip that out. Now that is already built inside of Elementor, but a lot of these accessibility tools give it to you again anyway. So you know, they kind of supersede it, seed each other without you having to worry. But that's what skip to content is. If we go back to top and this time we do not hit return to skip to content. If I click the tab now, it actually goes to the accessibility tool. So it jumps over to there. I can now use my tab again and I could maybe go and select one of these options. You would hit return to activate it. When you eventually get to the end, though, it then does go back to skip to content. Now, this is where it's now gone past the accessibility tool that I've added in. And it's gone back again to skip to content because that's the elemental one kicking out. So just bear in mind, if, can you see there's a different style there to that skip to content as opposed to this one? which is what is coming from the accessibility tool. So I just want you to understand if you ever do see two, it's not a deal breaker. And seriously, I don't think it's anything to worry about. When you are seeing the elemental one and you skip again or you hit tab, it will now take you over to your logo. If you hit return, that's going to take you back over to your homepage. If you're using a screen reader, that will probably tell you click this or links back to your homepage. So that's been that should make it clearer for people. You hit the tab again, you can see it's now going through the options on my uh, menu. Hit the return key, it will now give me the other options. And if I hit tab again, I could go to that particular page. If I go over here, you can now see it's showing me the sub menu items. I hope you've also noticed how it is doing an outline to the items. So because these are links that take you elsewhere, it kind of is informing you, especially if you were a little bit unsure. And if we go back over to the logo, you can see there is an outline there as well. Again, this is kind of done by what you do within your building of your items. So maybe you're going to put a outline in for when you hover over it. But again, some of these accessibility tools will do that for you. So play around with what works for you. If I tap past the menu, I'm going to get to my first button and that kind of grew. Let me just go back and then go back again. So you can now see it growing and there is a bit of an orange outline over there. If I hit tab again, it's now going to start taking me down. Now, what it does do is skip a lot of items. OK, but that's because the next button in terms of the tab is this one over here. So just have a think about how much it jumps down. 
but usually if people are using a screen reader, it will methodically work its way through. And basically as I start tabbing and tabbing, it's gonna go through every single button that we have on here and even these pop-ups as well. So I've kind of made sure I've gone through it. Now, if you recall earlier in our video series, it did flag this up as not adhering to the standard. It was kind of saying, you've got some accordions here, but you can't tab through them. That is partially true. So when I tab to my FAQ accordion and I hit tab again, it jumps to the book me for a one-to-one -one button. So it's almost gone and skipped everything. That's not entirely true. Because if I go and hit my down arrow, I can actually now move around my accordion and if I go to this one over here and hit return, it will now open. Click it again to close. Let's go to this one, hit return, and it opens. So using the keyboard with your arrow keys and return, which is what a lot of people would be using anyway, you can still access all of those links or accordion. And then down here, again, you know, just make sure you've added in your ARIA labels. I've got my social sharing icons. They've got descriptions as well. ARIA hyphen label. Uh, pipe and then it will say uh, clicking this will send me it will um, click this to send an email to Imran Sadiq or over here click this to go to Imran's Twitter X page or whatever I put in there and then again you have your items now I will just mention okay because again this will kind of um, trick some people up these are icon list items so if I click on the icon list you can see it appear over there each one of these is a link so again remember don't just pop your link in and go away go and click the link options and ensure you give it a custom attribute with aria hyphen label takes you to the privacy policy page or whatever you want I hope that helps you whether you're using Elementor, or WordPress any other page builder or Wix or Squarespace or any other solution technology in terms of making the content more accessible. <laughs>